Hello and welcome to episode 25. My name is Stephanie and I'm the creator behind the Crafty Dragonfly. Welcome, I hope you're all okay. Um, if you're new here, thank you so much for checking me out and I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, today it's going to be a bit quicker probably, I think, than normal. Um, I've been busy this week finishing off um, some projects that I talked about last week. So I haven't actually started anything new, which um, is unusual for me because normally I've got lots of uh, things on the go. Uh, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I really do appreciate it. And uh, if you're yet to subscribe, if you watch this video and you want to see more, then it would be really great to have you on board and just hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything and uh, it just helps me and my little channel to, uh, to grow. Yesterday, uh, me and my hubby spent the whole day moving me from the conservatory, that's where my craft room and office was, into um, our dining room, which is where I am now. And um, I, I used to have my office in this room and I really like it and it's part of the kitchen um, it just feels cosy, it feels more like a snug rather than a dining room. So we, he was really good, he, he spent most of the day um, helping me to move everything around. We've moved the table into the conservatory now and that was, it's really nice actually to have it in there. Uh, we've had our breakfast in there this morning so, and, uh, and it's nice for me to be in here where I just feel that it's right and I've got the Calax system behind me on one wall and then I've got my desk on the other wall so and that's where I'll be from tomorrow um, doing my day job so which uh, which will be nice so anyway enough waffling and um, I shall get on with it I'll start with finished objects because as I say I've been busy this week trying to just get to the end of what I've been working on. So I'll start with um, the actually the advent garland I haven't got to show you I've not got it to show you sorry um, I've already put it up on the fireplace so I'll put a picture in here uh, to show you what it looks like. Now if I'm totally honest I'm a little bit disappointed with it I don't know what it, well I do know what it is because I woke up this morning at six o'clock and thought I know what I need to do with that garland now whether I'll do it for this year or whether I'll just leave it up now and then I'll when I take it down I'll deconstruct it if I can I'll tell you why in a minute um, and then do it the the way I think it will look better for me for next year. What I've put it on is some uh, like baker's twine. It was in the box actually, and um, in the little box of crochet advent box, it was included in there. Now part of the pattern, Kate um, instructed you to make uh, some rope so that you could attach all the little bits that you'd crocheted onto the rope. So this was the same, so I just doubled it over and uh, got my glue gun out yesterday and um, once we'd finished moving everything around. So I, at the end of the day I thought well, I'll just start gluing it now. And I glued it all on but it's quite heavy, all the things on it. So when you stretch it out, the sort of tipping forward a little bit. You'll see in the picture anyway. Um, I'm not too sure about it. So I ended up putting lots of extra hooks on the fireplace and uh, hooking the twine over it to try and give it some stability. 
I didn't put the post boxes on as you'll see in the picture. I did put the rocking horse in the middle but I didn't bother to put the post boxes on. I've just sat them on top. So my plan is, is to get, um, you know, a green garland. Can't think what the name is. Um, where you can dress them up and you can put them on your stairs or over your fireplace in fact we've got one of those in the Christmas decorations box I think but it might be a bit too thick so I think for next year I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a partly ready-made one that's quite thin and then take the bits off the twine if I can get them off because I've hot glued them on them on now take them off and then reattach them onto this garland or, or even the the actual uh, leave it as it is and just attach it somehow to the garland do you know what I mean I don't, I don't know if I'm explaining myself properly but that's what I thought because I thought well there's it's very stable then that you've got a garland already and you've got the little elements that you've crocheted that you can just dot here and there onto the garland and then maybe make some more so I don't know I'm just not as taken with it as I thought I would be and it I mean it's nothing to do with the pattern at all it's beautiful and you know how I feel about Kate Eastwood, I really, really do like a pattern. She's one of my most favourite designers. So I know it's not that. Um, I think it's just the fact that it was quite top, just heavy and everything was leaning forward. Maybe I've just put it up wrong, I don't know. Anyway, see what you think when you, you look at the uh, the picture. And um, I've not even put it on Instagram <laughs> because couldn't get a nice picture of it I don't know anyway it's um I'm happy with it for now it's it's up it's done and um, moving on swiftly we'll get on with um Hercule the strong man do you remember him from last week if you've not seen my last couple of videos um just and you've got time just have a look at those and I'll, I'll talk about him a bit more in those videos so I finished him um, Murphy's just walked straight underneath the tripod so if the camera sh shook that's what it is um, it's going to go straight underneath again how are you going to get back now? he can't see very well so he keeps banging into things He's all getting on now, aren't you? Go on past. <laughs> he's at the side of me down here. He's in his bed. Right. Hercule, the strong man, is finished. So he's got... You can position his arms a little bit. They're, they're only very lightly stuffed here. And you don't... You stuff the, the ends a little bit, but not this bit in between. So that's what I've done, so I can position him. And I talked about his legs last week, how they, I'm not used to them being at right angles to the body, but he sits very nicely. Let me put him on my hand. Um, and that's how, how the designer's done it. Last week, I only had the boots to do. And I said to you that I was going to redo them because they didn't look right. I think I'd I'd not made them right. This took me two attempts again to get them how I thought they should look. They've got little laces on the front um, on both sides and it was me. <clears throat> I wasn't constructing it properly um, and I managed to get uh, to, so that they would actually sit on the leg properly um, and I went down a hook size I think so they didn't look too big but they look all right now and then you put laces you just put some little I just um, got some of this yarn this drops Paris um, took a one 
string one ply out because it's four ply and then I just threaded the front of the boot with a needle and uh, just tied it in a little uh, bow on either side um, and then at the back of the boot here <clears throat> she did say in the pattern that's what was throwing me she did say that you could uh, that you you constructed the boot and then you sewed this back bit up here and then there was a little space a little hole in the top for you to put the leg in but I couldn't actually get the leg in because it was quite a tight squeeze so what I did was I left this open put the leg in and then sewed over it um, so that it, it it's actually on the leg now so it's not coming it's not going anywhere um, maybe that's what she meant but I, that's not how I read it so I just did it myself and managed to get it looking how I wanted it to so he's done um, I have I've done his little kettlebell um, you can see that okay he just has a little oops little kettlebell it's in black so it's a bit difficult to see um, and then a barbell which I've done the ends of I've just got the the actual bar to make which won't take two minutes and then I'm going to find a nice box or I'm sure I've got one somewhere or try and reuse a box um, to put him in and then he'll be nice and safe ready for him to open on Christmas Day so really pleased with that one that's one uh, decent decent project I'll just grab my tea oops because I've um, my chair is squeaking like mad I don't know what's up with my hair today either so my chair's squeaking I'm going to put that there oops <laughs> right um, next finished make is the Christmas cushion a little bit of a disaster with this one but it wouldn't be me if I didn't have a um, slight disaster or creative error as I like to call it um, I've not got um, a cushion pad yet um, so I've just used one of the other ones that from out of the lounge and it's not it doesn't fit it properly um, so I need to get a bigger bigger cushion pad um, now hopefully you can see it all okay um, I'll try and sit back a little bit um, you can hopefully see the bottom and then there's the top right you might not, if you've not seen the pattern, although the last couple of videos I've shown you a picture of Kate's. Um, the border is in pillar box red, it's called. And you do, you work, I think it's three rows of the border. Yes, you do, three rows of the, yeah. You work three rows so I got as far as the second the two rows was on my last row what happened I ran out of yarn and uh, I didn't have any more left <laughs> so I thought okay well I've got uh, some of this green yarn left so I will use that so it looks all right actually because it obviously matches the, the main body of the cushion. So that's what I've done. So it's not it's not really a disaster as such. It's just um, and it's unique now because probably nobody else has made a cushion with this border or this this colour edging. So once I get a proper cushion pad for it, it will look a lot nicer than it does right now because as I say it's not it's not got um the correct size in so at the back it's um it's just an envelope style back um if I can manage to turn it round without it looking awful um there 
that's the envelope at the back and then I've got obviously the elements on the front so you've got the um, presents here and the post box with all the nice snow on and then you've got the robin and the ivy um, the robin wasn't unsure it uh, wasn't quite sure of but I think he looks okay and um, so I'm going to probably not put him on the sofa because um, I don't want anybody leaning against it so what I'm going to do when we put the Christmas tree up next weekend um, yeah to the next weekend I'm going to uh, stand it at the side of it on the floor with um, we've got like um, like a sheepskin rug type thing that we put under the tree so I'm going to put and it it just matches the tree so I'm going to stand it on that as like a bit of a um, decoration possibly along with the Christmas blanket that I showed you last week from the crochet sanctuary it's behind me I'm pointing it's here um, so I might just make a little display and then um, nobody will lean on it because you go to you know you make them you go to all that effort you don't want anybody leaning on them do you so yeah that's that so it's not really it's not a disaster it's just that it's not but then when I think when designers make these patterns they don't expect you to follow what they do sort of word for word you know it's nice to just do a little bit of a of your own um, spin on it I suppose so um, but I, I'm, I am quite pleased with it because I like that colour anyway that green colour um, so it's nice that it's part of the the border um, that's it for finished objects um, I feel like I've not shown you everything but it's because I've not got the advent garland in my hands but I have shown you a picture of it so so works in progress all I've got on at the moment is the Santa the woodland Santa from the little box of crochet um, unfortunately I've still not done anything more on it from a couple of weeks ago but now that I've um, finished the cushion and the garland I should be able to work a bit more on that for this week and uh, hopefully have something ready for you for next week um, the only other thing I've got as I say works in progress is the granny square blanket that I've started um, I've, there's not I'll just lean I'll just go and get the squares oops because they're just off to the side I showed you the squares last week so there's no point in um, showing you the squares again but what I wanted to just share with you, you you might do this anyway if you've made one before is um, with a granny square blanket because if you're just doing a individual squares you obviously have to make quite a few in order to make a nice blanket um, I'm making this up a bit as I go along to be honest so but what I've done is I've got a little bit of a production line going so I'm doing the middles or a couple of rounds to start off in one colour but not sewing the ends in these and then you know so doing like four say four in different colours and then I'm moving on to the next round again oops again in a different colour like that and then um, so and then moving on to the next colour and so on and so on and that way you're making you're sort of doing four or five in one go and um, rather than just doing one completing it and then starting right back from the beginning so I it seems to be working that because they're working up quite quickly 
or they, they feel like they are anyway um, so I don't know how many I'm going to do I'm just going to keep putting them down and having a look at um, how big it's getting and then obviously I've got to allow for the final round um, which is the join as you go method I'm going to be using there's obviously that to pad it out a bit and then you've got the border at the end which you can make a border as, as wide or as narrow as, as you want can't you so obviously I can make the blanket a, a bit bigger by adding the border if I don't think it's um, a decent size so there's not really much to show you on that other than just more squares so I'll just uh, just keep going with that and then I think once I start um, joining them I'll show you them because it's a bit more interesting for you to see and um, and then uh, I've got I've been distracted again by another pattern you know last week when I was talking about Christmas ideas and I showed you Kate's book The Crocheted Home and um, and what Christmas things she had in and you know the Scandi hearts and I um, can't remember what else I showed you oh the, the little garland with the buckets and the stockings and things so I've still got that in the back of my mind to, to start that but um, there's another crochet designer called Sarah uh, Sarah Prather, I think she's called. Sorry, if I've got if I've mispronounced that, I know she won't. Sarah won't be watching my channel anyway. So, um, but she's called Sarah D Crochet on Instagram, and I've had uh, I bought a few patterns off Sarah in the past, and um, she's quite. Um, what did I want to say? The giraffe lovey. That's one of Sarah's patterns. If I can find a picture, I'll put one in of when I made that. The sloth. That's another one. I'll uh, insert that picture if I can find it. That's one of Sarah's patterns, and um, I've bought quite a few others which I've not got round to making yet. But as I've said to you in the past, I do like to support designers because they work really hard um, as I'm sure you know uh, putting everything together and making the ebook and, and everything else so or making the pattern so this one is Christmas related so I, th I thought um, there seems to be a bit of a theme where um, it's going to be Christmas ideas at the end of my video so I um, saw this on Sarah's feed a few days ago and immediately bought the pattern because it's just they're just so cute so whilst I'm talking about them I'll put a picture in to show you they're called she's called them Jingle and Jangle and they're little Christmas elves and they're absolutely gorgeous they're so so cute I love them and Sarah works with um, she does all her patterns all her amigurumis and crochet lovies in sheepies stonewashed either um, the normal sheepies stonewashed can't get my words out or the stonewashed XL which is another one I've used in the past and um, they just they're just so lovely when when you make them in in sheepies um, they, they just look so different they're really really nice so I've got uh, I've got quite a bit of um, sheepies yarn um, that I've had that I've worked on things in the past so I've got bits and bobs lying about so I think what I'm going to do because I, I immediately want to go out and buy the colours that Sarah's recommended some of them I've got but um, the other ones uh, I haven't really. I'll just grab, just hang on. Ooh. If you look at, ooh, nearly not the stand over then. Um, I'll put the picture in again. So 
that's the green I'm going to use which I think is perfect for the bigger one or I can do the smaller one it doesn't really matter um, and then I think she's used this colour for possibly for the face or it might be that colour there's not much in it to be honest that for the boots which um, is bolder opal yeah and and then I've got a little bit but she's she's very good Sarah with her patterns because um, she tells you how much she's used in grams so you can weigh your own bits and bobs that you've got left so I've got that colour left for possibly for the arms I think you only need a little bit so I'll weigh that and see if I've got enough um, so yeah I'm going to I'll probably end up buying the red I don't know what colour that is I can't remember the name of it um, I'm looking over there because my laptop's on the desk and it's got a picture of them so I'm going to um, make them because they'll be quite a quick and easy make I think so I'm hoping I'll get those done for the next video for next weekend to show you um, and then that'll be nice and Christmassy and she's also got um, I'll leave a link to her Instagram below and um, and as usual anything I talk about if I've got links for it I'll leave it uh, just below the video so that you don't have to go searching for anybody you can just click on the link and it will take you straight to that person or shop or whatever um, so I yeah I'm hoping to get those done for next week to show you or if not they'll be well in I'll be well on with them so you'll have something to see and um, and then hopefully I'll get uh, some more done on the Woodland Santa. I might actually, I've seen a couple of people doing this on Instagram that they've started the little bits for the Woodland Santa. So like the mice or the buckets, um, <coughs> excuse me, the tree, um, you know, rather than starting Santa himself and doing his coat and um, which obviously you know there's quite a bit of um bit of crochet to do so if if the mood takes me this week i might start with a few of the little bits as other people have done just to um get me going with it and then i've got something to show you next week and um yeah and then i don't think i'll be at a point next week where i oh no man you might do was going to say with the um, granny square if I've got got enough for two rows say of the blanket and I start to do the join as you go method then I can show you that next week um, and then I think that's it I um, I've probably waffled on enough I've not got my glasses on this week so I'm um, I can't really see the screen very well which is a bit daft but anyway um, I also need to get my hair done sorry if it looks awful it looks a bit grey and washed out but it's another thing I need to get to the hairdressers although hubby has offered to um, dye my hair so um, and I have said yes actually so we'll see what uh, how that goes if I've got a hat on next week and and we've done it this week you know it's not gone well but I'm sure he'll be fine I always worry about that whether you're going to pick the right colour for your hair or not but it doesn't matter I don't I don't go out much anyway because I work from home as you all know so um, anyway on that note um, I hope you're all well anyway I hope you've all managed to get uh, some nice crafty knitting crochet time in this week and um, have you had any snow we've had snow these uh, last couple of days uh, we got part of the storm Arwen 
not as bad as some parts of the country I have to say um, we live in the north of England so we're near the Pennines so we do get quite bad weather and we always tend to get snow because we've got the hills behind us but um, I'm looking out now we've got it's white everywhere as it is for a lot of people up and down the country um, nice if you don't have to go out and drive in it because I don't like doing that but anyway I'm waffling so I hope you've all uh, <laughs> you all have a nice week and you get some crafty time in and thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time